The Equality Commission is responsible for promoting awareness and enforcing anti-discrimination law. The areas covered by the law make it unlawful to discriminate on the following grounds. Age, disability, race, gender, sexual orientation, religious belief and political opinion. The Commission has specially trained discrimination advice officers who are there to help when a problem arises. Literally thousands of people contact the Equality Commission to seek advice every year. Some cases can be resolved easily based on the Commission's advice and never go further. But some do end up in tribunals or even the courts. We've highlighted four individual cases where people have benefited from the Equality Commission's help. I'm Julius Anaka. Uh, I got into a situation uh, in a public bar uh, in Belfast where I was accused wrongly of consuming alcoholic beverages not purchased on the premises. I demanded for apologies, which I didn't get. I made a complaint and I got uh, threats back from the business. I contacted the Equality Commission. We took a case against the business and won. And I'm very grateful to the Equality Commission for the support I got. My name is Ricardo Hollywood, I'm 19 and I'm from Crossfire. I originally wanted to change schools at GCSE Standard from my original school to another school in order to study a level chemistry. After trying to transfer and being blocked because of my disability, I went to the um, Equality Commission and they thankfully backed me and supported me in, in my discrimination uh, case. And they helped me take the case to a tribunal, which we eventually won. Um, but in that case, it was landmark in itself in that no one else had won um, an education case in Northern Ireland. And also, it allowed me to study what I wanted to study, um, like any other people could do. And I know without them, I never would have been able to achieve what I did. What are we going to vote for? Emily and Hannah and I contacted the Equality Commission after I was unfairly dismissed from my previous employer. I used to work for a day nursery and when I was three months pregnant with my second child I was getting strange comments made to me by my employer. Then during my second pregnancy um, she had asked me as the manager of the nursery to make another girl redundant who was also pregnant at the same time. As she said the two of us couldn't be off on maternity leave at the same time. I didn't make this girl redundant and next thing she gave me a few days off at Christmas and then sent me a text message to have a meeting with her and at the meeting I was made redundant. So at that stage then one of the parents of the nursery contacted me to give me the number of the Equality Commission and that's when I contacted the Equality Commission and they helped me with my case. I had to go to a tribunal um, to try to come to some sort of settlement at that stage but um, she wasn't willing to say that she'd made an unfair dismissal. So the case continued um, and then eventually my employer settled the case for a substantial amount of money, um, but it didn't have to go right to court. She settled it before it went to court. At no time did I feel that um, I couldn't take on this case. I didn't feel it was too big for me, if you understand. My name is Terry McCoy. Um, I am 61 years old. Uh, some two years ago, I had the opportunity to submit an application for a position with a timber importer in Belfast. Uh, I happened to have many, many years experience in their particular field. Um, I was subsequently interviewed for the position uh, on two occasions and shortlisted and I was very, very surprised to learn a short time afterwards that I had been unsuccessful and uh, the person appointed to the position had considerably less experience and knowledge of the business than what I had. I felt um, very demoralised and I felt as if that my future was in tatters and that there was really nothing further for me and really my working life had terminated. It subsequently turned out that the Equality Commission considered, yes, there was a case to answer. Without the dedication 
on full support of the Equality Commission, I could not possibly have ran this case alone. And I am very grateful for their expertise and guidance, and they have brought my case to a very successful conclusion. We are actually trained in the customer service side because it, it is it can be stressful in some ways to deal with people. As you say, they're they're upset, they're crying, some of them are really angry. It's human nature, you've had something done on you that you don't like. And it's a case of actually talking to the person, um, making sure, trying to find out exactly what happened, because sometimes people will tell a story, but not necessarily telling you what has happened with relevance to the equality legislation. Um, trying to calm the person down if they're angry, comfort them if they're upset, basically as you would do in any situation really, and then try to get to the, the story as to what has happened to them and what can we as the Equality Commission do to help them. For example, uh, if a woman believes that uh, she had been harassed in the workplace, that there were sexual overtones to this, that she was treated in this way uh, simply because she was a woman, uh, she does have rights and remedies. That shouldn't happen in the workplace, but unfortunately it still does. And it takes a lot of courage for women uh, to assert their rights against their employer in the circumstances very often they feel lonely and isolated they feel that they're having to stand up against the might of an employer on their own and the Equality Commission can help uh, in this regard. Every single person who comes to us with an issue of potential discrimination or poor treatment and they come in the number in thousands three and a half thousand last year came to us every single person gets information and advice about whether the law covers that issue and what to do about it. Hello, good afternoon. The Commission receives about 450 applications for legal assistance every year. It's one of the very important things that we do. We cannot assist everybody who applies. First, they may not be a legal basis even though they may feel very unhappy with the way they've been treated. The law may not cover what they do. Secondly, it may not relate to any legal responsibility that belongs to the Equality Commission, it may be somebody else's area of attention. There is nothing we can do about that. And thirdly, we then have to make strategic choices because we're not a free legal aid centre. We don't have the resources for that, we're not funded for that. That's not what the law asks us to do. And I can understand that there's disappointment uh, on the part of people if the Commission doesn't assist them. But we have to take, and, and the courts have considered this in great detail, we have to take into account the range of our resources and allocate some sense of priority to the cases uh, which are presented to us. Not every case will get assistance, but everyone who comes in to see us will get advice. And of course, it's not everyone who will wish to issue legal proceedings in the circumstances. Quite often, people simply want to get sufficient information about their rights and the remedies that are out there, and then they will attempt to resolve the matter themselves. The Equality Commission is here to help you if you are looking for information and advice. The first point of call is the Commission's inquiry line on Belfast 02890 890 890 where you can take the first steps to speak to an advisor.